Hey, uh, right. Uh, just a quick. <clears throat> excuse me. Got a problem with my elevation rotor, um, and this is a really quick and helpful way to diagnose the problem. Um, this is a replacement capacitor. It's not. It's not the one that's going to go in there. This is just a, a motor run cap, 64 microfarad to 77 microfarad, um, rated at about 200 volts. But um, right, what the original capacitor in the um, the as uh, elevation rotor should I say is a uh, 100 microfarad at 60 volts. This is what happens when the cap starts going bad, and this is a really quick way to diagnose it. Um, but you can't, unfortunately, you really need to get into the head to change the cap anyway, so it's worth bringing it down. But this is what happens if you watch I'm going up, and there's the capacitor just clicked on. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's slowing down dramatically. Slowed right the way down. Let's go down again. And as that capacitor breaks down, that motor is slowing down. It's really struggling. So I'm going to run it until it's sort of like about to uh, stall. As you can see on the meter there, really, really struggling. And so is the motor. Sorry, this has uh, turned into a very long-winded video, but I have to. Uh, so you see, that's really struggling now. So I keep my yap shut for one second. And you can look. We are really down to a snail space. Okay. And that's really, really struggling. So let's take that cap out of line. Let's clip it on up here. Whoops. And we can clip the other half of the cap on here. So all I've done is just taken off one leg there already and bridged it with this connection. If I clip on the a crap, a good capacitor, oop, not a crap, a cap. <laughs> and then we start up the capacitor again. Uh, sorry, start up the motor again. There we are. Back to normal. Whizzing away. No fuss. There we go. So should your azimuth or elevation um, rotors start packing up and going all slow it's that part there um, from Yezu part number um, it would probably be the same part number for the elevator uh, sorry the azimuth but it's part number S81006411 I believe you'd have to double check that but that's off the top of my head because I have ordered a couple today so that's S for Sierra 8100641 which should be 100 microfarad at 60 volts and they can be ordered via Yezu. So there we are. Get your um, as an L back up and running. That motor seems to be beautiful now, working fine. Lovely. I can see it's whizzing away. Turn up again. These motors are not really meant to be, this is the AC version by the way, not the DC version, but these motors are not really, the, the duty cycle is about one minute on and about one minute off, but I'm really going to give it its paces today. It's about a minute on, minute off, minute on, minute off, um, roughly about 50% duty cycle. But when you're hunting for satellites, generally you're, um, you're like about a one in six ratio. I can't say that for definite, depending on what satellite you want and what's the, um, the, um, the highest altitude so if you imagine it's going to be up to 90 degrees you're going to be right overhead at 90 you're going to um, I think the motor will be running a lot longer so there we are all running well no strain whatsoever we good good luck and uh, have to catch you all on the bird soon M0 STO make it easy send me through Hi again. Um, right, so on the second part of this video, just to quickly show you, this is a very clever little mechanism. If I can just get it off. Right, inside there, well, I can only screw a tie piece of metal. And that's just a rubber grommet or rubber seal washer. Right, in here is the clever part. This is, this is quite an ingenious design. If you look inside there, there's a spring. And that spring sits there whoops not like that but like that so what happens if i try to turn this part here 
one that part sits in between that part there and that part there so that slots in there like that in between there and there what it does it causes the spring to expand and it grips on the inside of this edging here so as that spring expands it grips and goes tight and when it goes tight it locks and it stops it makes this really difficult to turn okay but what the clever part is when this turns it pushes the spring from the other side which makes the spring contract so it floats quite freely inside there but there's a little blob of grease in there put some grease in there just to uh, add some life expectancy to it but that's a really clever idea so if you're ever wor um, wondering how to rebuild this part here imagine that the bow tie goes there is the metal tang there is the metal tang and there's your bow tie piece of metal and that would basically, I don't really, know if it's going to spin off, I might have to put a couple of screws in here. Stop them spinning off. But, um, let's see if I can do this one handed. All on the fly stuff, you know. Do you know? Right, hang on. None of this lights, camera, action business for me. Just. Okay, so if I engage the motor now, see it spins quite freely, except it's pushing that spring out, which I don't want it to do. It won't do it when that's in there. See, if I spin that, see, it's no problem, it's, except it's spinning that out. It won't happen when the uh, when the gear's in. So, and if I put that, uh, let's wind that around there a bit. Oh, there we are. There. So, if I put that piece in there, like so. And if I try to uh, turn that, I want to try to turn it to there, look, it's tight, it's really tight. And if I try to turn it to there, it's really tight. It is tight. I don't know if you can see that. That's tight though. Yeah, see that it flops about like that until it hits the spring and then it goes tight and tight. But if I engage the motor where the spring's been pushed from the other side, as happy as Larry. What about that? M0 STO taking care of the elevation sector on the G5500 YAC uh, rotator there. It's only three.